trench mob testimonies where we dive into how your test became your testimony. Man, today we got a special guest on. Um, uh, people on Twitter, I mean X, um, formerly known as Twitter, mm-hmm. will probably know him as Coach Ed, um, the pass rush specialist. Um, but they know that he's a great trainer. He's training all these NFL um, pass rushers, and you know he, he's all over the place when it comes to every social media platform, and he's done a heck of a job of it. But we want to know who Coach Ed really is. Coach Ed, I appreciate you coming on today, baby. No doubt, man. I appreciate uh, being around a couple of D-line coaches, man. It's always a good time. No doubt, man. And, and you know, kind of going to jump right into it. So yeah. who's Coach Ed? Tell us about yourself, brother. Oh, man. Uh, where, where do I start? Um, you know, I was uh, growing up. I grew up in Houston, Texas. Um, I actually moved to the United States when I was six years old. I was I was born in Lima, Peru. Uh, me and my family moved to the States right around six. And uh, I didn't really know anything about football, man. Football to me was soccer. Uh, you know, first sport, grew up playing it. And I was always bigger than the other kids growing up. Um, got to Houston, Texas, and they were like, no, you're going to play football now. <laughs> and I was like, all right, cool. What, what is that? And they were like, just, just run really fast and hit this guy. And that's literally how it went. And I, I fell in love with it. You know, at that point, it just took off. Uh, you know, grew up grew up playing, man. I, I love the game and uh, didn't actually really start playing defensive line until I was about a sophomore in high school. Uh, I was playing running back and uh, linebacker and uh, got moved to D-line. I was kind of frustrated, you know. I was like, what, what is this position? And, uh, you know, got to get after the quarterback, and I think that sparked something. Uh, changed the trajectory of my life, you know, for good. And uh, I moved to California my senior year. Um, family just relocated again and uh, started playing ball out here and um, just kind of got stuck in the L.A. area. Uh, not a bad place to be stuck. But, uh, uh, you know, there's worse places in the world to be than Los Angeles, man. Uh, but uh, I, I, I actually – my playing career ended um, – Due to an injury, I had a uh, a fractured vertebrae and I severed a couple nerves mm-hmm. in the neck. You know, as we all know, this game is not for long and uh, got right into coaching right away. So, you know, it was like one of those like blessings in the skies where my playing career was over. But my my um, position coach, a guy by the name of Michael Stewart, he uh, reached out to me and was like, hey, you know, you've always kind of been a coach on the field as a player. Do you want to come out and, you know, take take your shot at coaching? And, Man, just like just like playing ball, I fell in love with coaching. You know, it was amazing. Uh, love giving back to the game. I felt like I had a lot to give back. I felt like just because you know my playing career was cut a little short, I was able to get back out there and, and offer a lot as a coach. And fell in love with coaching, man. Fell in love with the development side uh, of the training. You know, off season training. I just felt like there was a missing piece for my players, and you know that was a uh, that was something I took and ran with. Man, that's that's huge, man. Because when it comes down to you know what what we do and and how we do it, you 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 have to be dedicated to it. And for you to come from where you come from to not even understanding the game of it, and to now mm-hmm. be at this point where you're training the guys at the highest level, you know, um, and that's a a beautiful thing. You know, it's a testament to to your hard work and what you've done in your career, and, and kind of sticking. To that, you know, um, speaking on those NFL guys you've trained and college guys that you've trained before, you know, can can you talk about just kind of expound on more of who you've trained and who who you are training right now and who you trained this off season? Because I've seen all the videos, but the people need to know they got to hear it. Yeah, so I, I have a group of, um, I would say, consistently anywhere from twenty to forty guys that will come out to California in the off season, whether they make it their home here, you know, or they want to come out here just to be in good weather during that time of the year. Um, They'll come out here for weeks at a time and come train with me. Um, You know, uh, pro bowlers, you know, guys like Kenny Clark, who I know you you know as well, and um, younger guys, you know, first round picks, and uh, they'll come out here and train. And and I try to, what I try to do, 
for the younger guys is mesh them and intertwine the sessions in with the vets to kind of give them that, that experience. Cause a lot of these vets will put their arm around those young guys and be like, Hey, you know, this is what I like to do. This is how the guards and tackles are going to set you. And, I feel like that type of information is is priceless for a young guy trying to get, you know, your feet wet in the NFL because um, it's a whole new game. As we know, it, it changes completely, especially in the trenches. Um, everything happens so much faster. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the guys that come out, you know, uh, have, I've been lucky to work with a lot of first round picks and guys that are physically gifted. And, you know, it, it, from my perspective, I feel like those are the guys that need to almost refine their skills a little bit more and become more technicians um, because, you know, with that type of athletic ability, their speed, their power, you know, their quickness, their size, their strength, like, man, you add technique to that. And we're talking about, you know, some serious problems for offensive linemen to have to deal with. Um, so, you know, some of the guys like Aiden Hutchinson, Aiden Hutchinson, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jalen Phillips, uh, Quiddy Pay, um, you know, even Quinn and Williams back in the day when he was coming out, getting ready for the NFL, uh, some of those guys were just, you know, freak shows athletically, just different. And you see it on Sundays when they play, but, you know, they're able to add a tool or two to their belt and then, you know, flash forward a few years and they're they're worth, you know, anywhere from 90 to 100 million dollars. It's it's pretty it's pretty awesome. man. it's it's probably my favorite part about doing this is seeing those guys, you know, break break the bank a little bit and change their lives and their families lives forever. Wow. Yeah. Now you mentioned some names there, man. I can tell you that. And um, so just talk about that a little bit, man. You, I mean, you work with first rounders, man, you know, all pro guys. How do you, how did that come about? You know, how did you build your brand and, and your name up to where those guys can come out and trust you? Cause a lot of guys out here, you know, trained guys, they would love to have, you know, the guys that you, you work with. And so just, Talk a little bit about that, man, how you was able to connect with those guys, how you were able to build your brand up to where it is today to allow you to have that opportunity to work with such high-profile guys. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I feel like I've almost just been in the right place at the right times for the most of it, if that makes sense. Like, I never really felt like I was, you know, reaching or trying to do too much. I just I just stuck to myself and did what I knew was, was um, you know, I feel like I can never stop learning. And I know you guys feel the same way as coaches and you know, it, it, you, once you start to feel that way, it's it's kind of it's kind of over with. That's when you get lapped. You know, someone else will catch you. So I feel like I'm always trying to learn more. Um, and that's how I do it every year. I reload and say, what can I do different? And I, I look back on the training that I was doing when I first started this in 2015. Um, and I was like, uh, I don't do that stuff anymore. You know what I mean? So like it's it's forever changing. But, you know, I, I, I was with a, a group called um, Sports Academy out here north of LA in Thousand Oaks where the Rams are. Um, and it's a training facility. And at the time it was just a, you know, a training facility where guys could come in, get their workouts and stuff. And um, just really random, but Kobe Bryant, uh, his team had bought the facility and they turned it into a company called Mamba Sports Academy. And I don't know if you guys had heard of this when Kobe was doing this back in the day before he passed, obviously, but um, he came in with his team um, you know, came into this company and was basically like, look, I want to I want to create a holistic experience for all types of athletes at all ages. And I had just so happened to be involved in the youth and high school sector of like, you know, creating training programs for kids and high school guys that would come back and do positional training, strength training, recovery. Um, and there were some guys in the Rams in their training, some offseason NFL guys on different teams. And, you know, I think they kind of noticed the training I was doing with the high school kids and college kids. And they had kind of just popped over and were like, hey, uh, can we jump in, pay for a couple sessions? And I was like, yeah, I've never I've never trained pros before. So, you know, you let me know what you want to do and let's rock. And I think after that point, you know, flash forward maybe three or four years, the word of mouth just, you know, went around with those guys. And they just liked what I was doing, liked how the work was going for them. And they were having a lot of success on the field, which I think was, you know, the really important part. And they would just keep coming back. And for me, it was just an opportunity I saw. And I was like, man, I can really do this. I feel like, you know, what I'm doing is working. And uh, I just I just buckled down and went to work and started finding out to refining more and more techniques and building more programs into it and seeing what we could do. And, you know, shout out the guys, I mean, that were that were, 
you know, the beginning, it was a guy by the name of Cassius Marsh, who I don't know if you've heard of the name. I mean, he played in the league for a while. He, I think he's just now finishing up, but he bounced around from like six different teams, you know, free agent grind. Uh, he kept coming back, kept bringing guys with him. A um, bunch of undrafted guys on the Rams who are now, you know, pretty cool. They're all paid in at different locations, you know. So they still come back into L.A. in the off seasons, even though they don't live here. Um, but, yeah, that's really how it started, man. I kind of I just kind of, you know, buckled down and was like, let's do it. Um, you know, to flash forward, though, to like where it really started was I was coaching junior college um, out here at a place called Moore Park College, 2014 and 15. And I just I realized, man, these kids have no resources outside of what the school was providing. So I just took it upon myself, took my group of guys. Took them in the off season, spring and summer, and got them out to the field. Gave them free sessions, and they benefited from it on the field. Our team benefited from it as a program, and that's when I realized I was like, "Man, I want to do this training stuff. Like, this is fun. Like, I enjoy getting guys better, and the stuff that we're doing is working." So, yeah, man, that's a phenomenal story, man. And and, and I I didn't even know. I you know I had heard of you know. You know, Kobe Bryant with his Mamba Academies and, and stuff like that. That's a pretty cool story, man. You know, uh, God rest his soul, man. But for real, that's pretty. That's pretty awesome. And like you said, being at the right place at the right time, man. That that's you know that's that's very you know fortunate for you. And, and man, you you took that and you ran with that opportunity, man. And it became what it became today. So, uh, just even with that though, how often do you do you go cleaning with other D line coaches or is that something that, that you add as well uh, outside of your training? You go spend time with other D-line coaches talking ball. Is that something that, that you do as far as part of helping building your brand and, you know, doing what you do? You know what? I, I would love to do that more often. Um, you know, unfortunately, I feel like not everybody, I don't want to, uh, you know, generalize, but I feel like in this industry, a lot of it is not everybody, but there are some egos in this industry and sometimes, it, you know, it, it it's hard to mesh with people and, and have conversations. I feel like a lot of people are, you know, putting curtains over things and not wanting to express or share their, you know, uh, philosophy or their techniques or, or they feel like it's something that they need to maybe hold on to themselves. And I'm like, for me, man, I'm like, yeah, if you, you got questions and you want to know, I'm not holding any, any secret sauce. You know what I mean? Like, like, let's chop it up. I feel like it's, I feel like the culture should be like, let's share um, you know, let's educate, let's get guys better for the, for the reason of it, you know, only as a whole, man, defensive line should be that way, that brotherhood. So, you know, I'm big on that. I've, I've chopped it up with a lot of different private coaches and, you know, some of us have agreed on things. Some of us have, you know, butted heads and, um, I feel like it is what it is. You kind of keep it pushing, but that is something I've actually really, you know, looked into over the last couple of years more. So now that I've uh, been able to cultivate some relationships with guys like yourselves, um, just through like social media platforms and just trying to maybe, you know, get a bunch of people under the same roof or maybe on the same calls and do something weekly or, you know, uh, bi-monthly and just try to get a, just try to get a bunch of great minds like this together. I think that's why it's so cool what you guys are doing with this podcast. No doubt, man. That's that. It, it, I think this situation right here with this podcast is something that allows you to do exactly what you just did that that right there is going to be pushed out there to a lot of different people that are, that are in this profession and doing the same things that we're doing as the line coaches as football coaches in general um also you know you 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 put yourself and i think just the trainers in general all right um for me that you guys get all the respect in the world i mean you're your coaches too I mean, you gotta, you gotta do your homework. You gotta watch the film. You gotta, you know, uh, sharpen up the tools, enhance the tools of those guys that you're training. All right. Yeah. Of course, they're NFL coach, they're NFL players, but you know, you, they have NFL coaches too. You know, they, that they have to enhance them. You know, every week to go win a game. You enhance them to get their skill sets to the point where they get, can go win those games. In my opinion, that's how I see things. So I, I got all the respect in the world for what you do and, and how you do it and, and what um, guys like yourself do um, in, in, in this profession. So, um, you know, salute to you on that. Um, but I wanted to um, kind of ask about that, you know, NFL realm of things. Um, I've seen quite a few trainers here re recently, 
you know, get the opportunity to, to go to the NFL. I mean, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm talking about guys that have ha, that have some have not played in the NFL, um, and some, you know, probably sparingly played in college, um, and some have played in the NFL. Yeah, and, you know, and had good careers in the NFL. Um, but you know, do you have any dreams or aspirations of of that man? I, I see it. I see it on Twitter. Uh, well, X. I see it on X. That X. You Doesn't know, that sound um, crazy? Yeah, the guys are. <laughs> they always talk about like, man, Coach A is the next one up. He 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 he's he's gonna be next next guy up in the NFL. Um, coaching in the NFL, um, pass rush specialist, or you know something to that nature. Um, do you see yourself um, doing the same? Well, I mean, I honestly, all that stuff is very humbling to me. Like, I. I do hold myself to like high high standards when it comes to coaching. Like I I want to be thought of as a great. I think that's you know that's not why we all do this, but I know you know we all hold ourselves um, you know to high standards when it comes to coaching. Like this is this is why we do this. Like we want to be great. You know we, we're not we're not just coaching to coach. I think that's what pushes all of us. So yeah, I think you know when it comes to moving up and 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 you know moving up the ladder, I think that's the ultimate goal for every you know. Uh, D-line coach in the world, they want to coach the best. They want to be at the best level. So, you know, I can definitely see myself wanting to do that one day. Um, you know, I consider myself extremely lucky and and uh, just being able to work with a bunch of guys spread out through all over the NFL. I think that's that's probably the, my favorite part of my job is that, you know, I'm not I'm not just with one room. You know, I'm spread. I'm there's a little piece of, um, you know, what I do in almost every room in an NFL locker room. And I, you know, I look back on that and I'm like, man, that's kind of crazy. You know, I got guys, you know, guys texting my phone, sending me clips of videos all day long during camp right now saying like, what do you think with this, this set? Did I get it right here? And I'm like, man, that's wild. Like, you know, the fact that I'm getting that and, you know, you got coaches in the NFL that are, you know, capable, but, you know, they're not actually teaching these things. And that's kind of what trips me out a little bit in that sense where I'm like, yeah, I definitely want to give myself a shot and maybe go run a room one day and do that kind of stuff. And, you know, what you were saying, coach, with, you know, I know guys like BT, you know, obviously getting a shot with the Seahawks is that's a huge, huge deal for guys like myself because, you know, uh, Chuck, uh, Chuck, um, uh, what's his name? Coach Chuck, uh, is it Chuck Smith? I want to say yeah, Chuck Smith right there. I didn't want to kill the last name. Uh, Chuck Smith out with Baltimore. I think that's huge. You know, like I feel like those type of movements is is you know it's it's evolving, and the NFL is starting to take notice. Those front offices and the staffs are starting to notice that hey, guys are going to these guys and they're developing, and they, and and maybe there's something there. So um, you know, I had a couple calls this year from some from some uh, front offices, and you know, th- there were conversations to be had, and and I feel like I never really. Um, I never really tried to put my hat out there because I love what I do so much, but I could see myself, you know, leaning more towards that way. Even the college route, you know, like what you guys do too is, is incredible, man. That's one of my, that's always been one of my dreams is to go be able to recruit kids and, you know, cultivate that, that, uh, that culture into that room with those younger guys and help them mold into role models and leaders out in the world, you know, cause that's more than just football when it's not at the professional level. Like mad respect for what you guys do, man. That's that's a, I feel like that's the biggest beast right there as a D line college coach. Like you guys really got to build relationships with younger kids and recruit twenty four seven, and um, you know build relationships with families and stuff, and all while trying to juggle what you guys are doing in your own life. So you know, mad respect for what you guys do. I think it's what probably like eleven thirty midnight over there for you guys, and you know we're popping on a podcast, so like. I know, I know. It's this this stuff means a lot to you guys. So, mad respect for you guys as well. I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, it's kind of late, but hey, look, man, <laughs> we're here. We, we love what we do, and that, that's yeah. why we're doing it. You know, because when when it comes down to it, man, we we would not be doing this if we didn't love it, right? As far as coaching, as far as um, you training um, and and giving yourself, putting yourself in a, in a situation where you can get the opportunity to talk to front offices of NFL teams, to talk to power five schools, to, you know, um, consult with, with, with different people that can help you get to that next level. Um, I think we both, me, Tony and I, um, we do have dreams and aspirations of going to that next level. 
Um, it's just a little different way of how we got to get there at, at this college level. But it's still, this, our, st- our dreams are still the same. Our aspirations are still the same. And it's, it's no, you know, knocking anybody's dreams and aspirations, man, because it's yours. <laughs> you know, yep. it's, it's something you want to do, you know. So um, I want to kind of play like a little role right now, man. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the head coach of whatever NFL team, and, and Tony's, the, Tony's the, um, the defensive coordinator, all right? And I'm sitting here, and, 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 and you're interviewing for us. And, and the head coach, I'm the head coach, I'm asking you, so tell me your coaching philosophy. Let's talk about that. I want you to come in here um, on this NFL team, this club. We are, you know, we 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 are excited about having you come in and talk with us, right? Um, and we want to talk to you about your coaching philosophy and 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 see if you fit in with what we do here. Yeah, I think the first thing, man, is just um, developing a room of guys that are selfless and that are capable of laying it down for one another and not just you know self-centered and focus on their own goals. I feel like defensive line play if one guy's getting home, the other four have to be doing something to help them. You know what I mean? There's not just one. And um I've always had this uh it's stuck with me ever since I was a young kid, man. It's uh O N E, one's not enough. Mm. And I've always I've always lived by that, man. Every single room this is going into my ninth year coaching. I've, I've coached the JUCO level for nine years, and this is my first year at the high school level. Um, I brought that in and said that in every single room and every single time I get guys buying into it and wanting to play for each other. And, man, I've just been lucky to have guys that, that will lay down for each other. And that's that's that type of brotherhood is really hard to go against as an offensive line or as a you know, as an OC trying to scheme up one guy because you got four of them that are just willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that, you know, that quarterback gets kept in a pocket and that B-gap doesn't open up late. Um, you know, they'll run that game no matter what the situation is and not be selfish and duck inside when they don't have to. I think if you can build that type of culture in a room as a defensive line, you're cooking with gas at that point. You know, and then it, and then it gets fun. You know, I, I'm a big four down you know, attack vertical, you know, let, let your defensive lineman go. Um, you know, I think there's a time and a place to two gap. I really do. Um, I think you've got to have the guys that can do it though. And not everybody can do it. And I think that's where a lot of guys get messed up, you know, cause it takes a certain body. It takes a certain skill set to be able to two gap, especially in the higher levels. Um, you know, I want my defensive ends to be able to move, to be able to bend, to be able to run. Um, I believe that, that you, you can set edges with speed and you, they don't necessarily have to be too powerful on the edge. Um, my inside guys got to be able to push the pocket um, and they got to be able to be smart and understand when, you know, they're at the same level as the defensive end to be able to cover and stuff like that. You know, um, I'm, 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 I'm a big believer in I don't care how you get home to the quarterback, uh, you know, as long as you are How can I put this? Um, I don't care how you get home as long as you are getting home. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need you to throw a certain move. I don't need, I don't need you to be able to spin. Like, you do what you do. Like, just make sure you hit home. And then as far as the run game goes, you know, just being violent, resetting the line of scrimmage, playing with good leverage, you know, having your hands where they're supposed to be, having your eyes where they're supposed to be. Uh, big, big believer on training eyes because I believe eyes go along with the pad level. I feel like if you have bad eyes, you have bad pads, you have bad hand placement. And, you know, that's a big no-no. Um, and then I train as far as body mechanics go. I really train everything from the feet up. I feel mm-hmm. like if the feet aren't working, good luck. Because if you got bad feet, if you have a bad base, an offensive lineman will take advantage of you with leverage and body position. And um, you will be out-schemed and out-moved out of your gap when, when you need to be there in the, in the, um, in the right place. Uh, so that's, you know, that's just a little bit about it. That's awesome, man. And you kind of touched on a lot, man, a lot of details, you know, a lot of things that take time uh, and, and film, you know, watch your film and understanding the game, understanding your leverage, and understanding, you know, the position. So just speak a little bit about that, man, just for you. I know you you're coaching, uh, you know, high school ball, but kind of stay there and also talk about a little bit about the guys that you train, man. How many hours 
you know, for yourself that you put in watching those guys, them dissecting their stances, their get offs, you know, and just the overall game. And how does it help, you know, prepare you when it comes time, time to train those guys? Well, I think that's, I mean, I think that's number one. I think the film study that I started doing coach was like what changed my perspective of training. Like I was big on, um, just watching guys that were getting home all the time, making like seeing what they were doing with their mechanics, like with their hand placement, where they were stepping, where they're, where they're, um, like what kind of angles they were taking on their rushes. And um, I think that changed everything for me because I really started really dissecting those little movements and being able to take those movements and put them into training situations, start to train the body, start to train the mind, start to train the feet. And then as far as for, for what I would do from some of my players was, I would cut up like, um, let's say I had a defensive tackle that had a, you know, a really good freshman year at JUCO, and he was coming back to us for his sophomore year. I would cut up every single pass rush he would win, any quarterback hit, any pressure, any sack, and the the night before the games, I would have him watch that, and just be able to envision it and see it. And I think a lot of people don't understand the power of envisioning and being able to manifest that kind of stuff because when you're seeing it like that it becomes muscle memory and these guys go out to the field and then he just watched about a you know two minute clip of him just winning whooping the guards ass over and over and over again he goes out to the field on saturday night and it's like oh i'm just doing what i just watched last night you know so it's that was really interesting to me and that's when i started really having a lot of success especially with my pros because they have so much, so many resources, so much access to film. And the longer they've been playing, the better they've been playing. You know, uh, just, to, just to touch on it, Kenny Clark, and I just got off the phone a little bit ago. We talked for about an hour watching his practice tape of him winning one-on-one reps and just telling him like, all right, I'm going to cut this up. I'm going to send it to you tomorrow. I was like, watch it in the morning before practice and get out there and go get active. So still doing the same thing, even for practice tape. But yeah, you know, I mean, you guys know to, to answer you hours and hours and hours of film, like you cannot, you can't get away with it, man. You just, you can't shoot that type of grind as a coach, man. You got to watch film. No doubt, man. And and it, when you think about it, you know, uh, we're, we're creatures of habit, right? Um, you, you say it can cause you and, and y'all have a conversation when we're watching, you're watching clips of of, you know, um, whatever he's doing through the, through the day and y'all are helping each other. You're helping him. Um, even more so mentally than you even know. You know, what I mean, you, you're you're going through the film and you're, you're talking about uh, different techniques. How can you get better? What what can you do here? What are you seeing here? And, and y'all are going back and forth and having that dialogue with each other. That is probably a common mechanism for him that he don't even know that he's that he needs. So I, I think sometimes on the mind side of things, um, we do more than what we think we do as coaches. So, man, kudos to you on that. Um, so I kind of want to transition to the last segment of the show. Um, how we usually do it is we, we kind of dive into how your test became your testimony. So okay. what is your greatest test in your life that allows you to tell your testimony? Greatest test. I like this, man. You guys are going deep. I like it. How many guests have you had so far? Um, you are the seventh. Okay, good. So still early in it. You've had you've had some 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 deep combos then. Some deep, yeah. You got. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I mean, I would say, um, you know, everybody's story's different, man. I mean, when I finished, um, when I finished playing ball because I got hurt, um, I was in a dark place, man. Like just to, to keep it to keep it a buck, like. I didn't know what was going on. My whole life was football, football, football. Um, you know, you're so good. You're, you know, from the from the friends, family, you're so good. You're going, you're going to Division One. You're going to the NFL one day. Um, and you know, you get you kind of get brainwashed into thinking that that's all that is. You know, that's all life is. It's just ball. And um, as soon as that was taken from me, man, I didn't really know what to do. So I, you know, resorted into you know, uh, getting into drugs and getting into things that were just, you know, trying to trying to numb my mind, numb my heart from losing something I love so much. You know what I mean? Like, you don't really know what to do. You're lost. And 
for me, there was like a year of my life where I finished playing ball, got into some bad habits. And I had that, that, you know, like, you know, come to Jesus moment, man, like where I was sitting there by myself and I was just like, what are you doing? You know, like, what, what are you doing? You're throwing, you're throwing this away. And, you know, just so happened to be, man, that, that same morning, I get the phone call from my, co- from my old coach. And I swear, I, I've been saying this, he saved my life. Save coaching football, playing football, save my life because I was going down a path of destruction and there was nothing that was going to pull me out other than, you know, finding something that I truly love to do again. And um, I think that was that moment, man. That was that test for me. And I was able to dive into it head first and just go all in. And, um, you know, to this day, I, I, I vividly remember that feeling. And um, you know, I have no problem in sharing those moments because I think, you know, people should be able to open up and talk about things mm-hmm. like that because, um, you know, as football players, we're always told, like, be tough, be strong, you know, uh, suck it up. You know, we heard that our whole lives, man. And, and I feel like nowadays, you know, we have to, we we're, we know too much. Like, you don't need to, you don't need to suck it up by yourself, man. You got people in your corner. And I was lucky enough to have someone that cared about me to pull me out of it and my family to pull me out of it, changed my life forever. And, you know, I've been coaching ball ever since. And um, I'm very, very blessed and very happy to be able to do it. Man, that, that's 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 truly a test, man. And you, and you truly have a testimony, brother. That's that right there is why we do this. You know, um, this is therapy for me, man. It's therapeutic. I, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure it's the same for for Coach Davis, and I'm I'm on here right now, man. And I'm we we both have been through so much in life, and still going through it. And we get up every day, we go to work, we grind it out, we coach, we mentor, we recruit, we do everything that we do, and then you go through life, right? And when you go through that test in life, um. You want to make sure you pass that test so you can sit here right now and tell your testimony, man. Kudos to you, man. Salute to you. You're doing a heck of a job. Continue to, do, continue to do what you're doing because um, we, we're watching and, and we want to see you be successful, man. And, and, and you're already successful, but even more, just go get all your dreams that you want, man. Go reach for all your goals and go get them, um, man. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you jumping on with us. And I appreciate you telling us about your your life and your story, man, and your training and your coaching and and everything, man. It's it's been good, but I appreciate you. Absolutely, bro. Mad respect to you, bro. Uh, I, I enjoy watching what you do, man, and, and and so does my guys, man. My guys watch you. They, they watch the the oh, film that, that you man. put out, man. They they're huge fans, bro. I'm telling you, you gotta you you doing some powerful stuff, man. And you know your your testimony. And, and your will, man, it shows through through your work, bro. So, mad respect to you, man. Keep doing what you're doing, bro. Coaches, I appreciate both of you guys a lot, man. You guys keep doing it. Good luck this year. You know, go get after it, man. Go go get those kids right, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully we could do this again, man. Maybe we can get uh in the off season, maybe get uh a couple of the pros on. We could you know break some film down, whatever you guys want to do. Let's just keep mm-hmm. talking ball and spreading that good word, man. Um. And and don't forget, man, I got some high school kids you guys got to get after. I'll have, I'll have a couple guys for you guys, so we'll get that going, too. Man, no doubt, brother. No doubt, man. We yeah. appreciate you. We appreciate you, man. And, and like I said, continue to do what you do, and we're going to continue to do what we do. And we will reconnect yes, <laughs> after sir. the season. All right? Yes, sir. Hey, that's Trench Mob Testimonies, and we are out. <laughs>